Hey church family, I'm out here sitting on the uh, front porch here at uh, Redemption Hill, sort of enjoying the, uh, the day uh, before we all go on to shelter in place here in just a few moments. Also, wearing the Braves hat, you know, in honor of the fact that uh, baseball season was supposed to have started yesterday. And uh, even though the team's not able to play, certainly got my baseball groove going on. Anyway, I hope you all are doing well, that uh, you're feeling good, and that um, the peace of God is just uh, keeping you. And so we are here once again for our daily devotional. This is day 10 of our walk through Philippians. And today we're looking at Philippians chapter 2, verses 19 through 24. So um, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and, and get them out, or maybe get it up on your Bible app, get you a nice cool drink, and uh, let's look at the video. says, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, that I also may be cheered when I receive news about you. I have no one else like him who will show genuine concern for your welfare, for everyone looks out for their own interest and not those of Christ. That's not good. Verse 22, but you know that Timothy has proved himself because as a son with a father, he has served with me in the gospel. I hope therefore to send him as soon as I know how things will go with me. And I am confident in the Lord that I myself will come soon. Let's just pray real quick and then we'll dive in and see what kind of encouragement uh, the Lord has for us in this particular passage. Well, Father, we thank you for this day. Father, I thank you for our church family. I thank you, Lord God, for your faithfulness Father, I thank you that we can take peace, we can take comfort and confidence, Lord God, that you, Lord God, are in control. That, Father God, that our hope is in you. Father, we just ask in Jesus' name, Lord God, that you would just continue, Lord, to uh, put your hand, Lord God, against, Lord God, the, the virus, Lord God. We ask and we pray that you would intervene, Lord God, that sickness would uh, abate, that you would protect our family, our friends, our community, our nation. Father God, those around the world, Father God, that you would bring health and well-being to all. So, Lord, we thank you. We give you honor. We give you glory. Lead us now in this uh, devotion, and it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. You know, so uh, here in verse 18, Paul starts out, and he says, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon. I think it's important to understand that as Paul's writing this, once again, remember that he is in jail. Paul is in, his, in the middle of his own personal crisis. And as we've seen throughout uh, this particular book so far, Paul has extreme affection for the Philippian church. He's missing his friends. He wants to be with them. He wants to encourage them. He wants to teach them. He wants to disciple them. And it's obvious that his heart goes out to them because they are separated by distance. He is being forced to be distanced from them uh, by being in, in jail. And uh, so it is his own crisis uh, that he is facing at this moment, uh, not being able to be with them and is facing hardship. And so he starts out and he says, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon. Now, it would seem like, you know, he could just say, I, I hope to send Timothy to you soon, but he doesn't say that. He says, I hope in the Lord Jesus. I think he's being very specific there um, to use the phrase, hope in the Lord Jesus. And the reason why I say that is this, is that as we all are experiencing in times of challenge or of crisis, uh, we begin uh, to take nothing for granted. Crisis has a way of making you look at even the smallest things in, our, in, uh, in your life, the smallest things in our, in our lives and not take them for granted. To not take for granted uh, the time that we have with family and children or with friends. To, to not take for granted the ability to come to church every week and, and, and gather together and worship together and pray together. To not take for granted the uh, the blessing that it is to you know to work and to, and to see other people, to be able to move about our routines. So crisis has a way of reminding us that there's not one thing in life that's not a blessing from God. The Bible says that every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father. And I think that Paul, when he says, "I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy." He's not just pitching out there in the Lord Jesus as a religious phrase. It's because Paul is truly uh, realizes that in all things, that his hopes are dependent on Christ. Um, 
that he is aware of his dependency on Christ and the sufficiency in Christ. And so our only hope is in him. And so we depend on Christ to be our provider. Uh, we depend on him for our health and our well-being. Our hope is in him in times when we're worried and anxious uh, because he is our peace of mind. If only through him can we have peace of mind. He is the Prince of Peace. Um, and in moments here, once again, this afternoon, uh, as our whole county and really our whole area goes on a shelter in place order and there's gonna be times where maybe we feel isolated, but Jesus is a friend who sticks closer to, uh, than our brother. So our hope is in him for companionship and for satisfaction and for our needs to be met. And so Paul says, I hope in the Lord Jesus because his hope is firmly rooted in him. Now, the other thing that occurs to me out of this is like, why is he sending Timothy? And in verse 21, Paul says something which I think really the context of this verse centers around uh, or this passage in verse 21, he says, I'm gonna send Timothy to you because everyone is looking out for their own interests and not those of Jesus Christ. You know, and, and so that's a little bit, that, that, that's a criticism and a little bit of a condemnation as to what's happening uh, 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 around, around Paul. He says, everyone is looking out for their own interest. And once again, Times of crisis has a way of revealing character and, and it can bring out the best in people. And unfortunately, sometimes it brings out the worst. And we've seen examples of this just in the news um, as you know, there's been reports of people uh, getting in fights you know, at, at the local grocery store, at the Walmart. So I, I, I heard this report the other day from a friend, they were in a store and uh, somebody reached over and actually uh, took uh, 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 some paper products, some toilet paper out of another person's basket because in their mind they were they were hoarding all the toilet paper. So they just went help help themselves and then these two people get into an argument and, and into a fight. And, and so crisis sometimes brings out the worst in people, you know, and we become self-centered and we become self-indulgent uh, 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 and self-obsessed because, you know, it's just once again, uh, natural for our own felt needs to begin to take over and we lose sight of the fact that we are to love others uh, as we love ourselves and what does it mean to, to love others as ourselves it means to be able it means to want for my neighbor as much as I want for myself and so the gospel reminds us that Jesus left uh, and sacrificed and left the glories of heaven, he humbled himself in order to come into our need, in order to meet our need and to give us uh, 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 what, we really, uh, what we really needed. Jesus went toward our need. He, he, he humbled himself uh, to come to us. And so therefore the gospel takes our eyes off of our need and causes us to look at our neighbor's need. And as much as I want, uh, to have supplies for my own household, the much as I want health and well-being for me and my family, to that same degree and passion, I should want it for my neighbor, my coworker, and the uh, and the person who lives down the road. The second thing that Paul says is that about Timothy, is that while in this context of culture, while everybody is uh, uh, looking towards their own need, Timothy has proved himself through his work of the gospel in verse 22. It says, Timothy has proved himself because as a son with his father, he has served me in the work of the gospel. And so this really gets to the point that I was just making a second ago, that the gospel pivots our eyes off of ourself and it puts it on the needs of others because as we love God, so we love others. If we're loving God with all of our heart, with all of, all of our mind and all of our soul, then we are then able to love others well. If we're not uh, loving others well, then that says something then about the state of my own personal devotional love towards the Father. And then finally, what is it that uh, Paul wants Timothy to do? What is it, why is he sending Timothy there? And we see that in verse 19, we see that he says, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you that I may be cheered up when I receive news about you. And so uh, Proverbs says that receiving good news from a distant land cheers the heart, cheers the soul, makes one, makes one glad. Isn't that how that is? Don't you enjoy it when you hear good news about something? When you jump on today or later on, you get on Instagram or Facebook 
and you see uh, good news, doesn't that cheer, cheer you heart? Doesn't that make you feel better as well? And so one of the things that we need to be um, mindful of uh, while we're in this uh, moment of, uh, 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 of need in our culture is how can we cheer somebody up? How can we encourage someone? And then as well, uh, uh, to be cheered up by how God is moving and working in the lives of others. Then the second thing that Paul says, he wants Timothy not only to be a source of encouragement for himself and to the Philippians, but he also wants Timothy to look after their needs and their concerns. In verse 20, he says, I have no one else like Timothy I will, uh, who will show genuine concern for your welfare. And so the second thing Paul says, hey, not only do I want you to be encouraged and I want to be encouraged by hearing a good, good report about you, we need to make sure that we're communicating. But the other thing too is this, is that as we're communicating, I wanna know and hear uh, 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 about your concerns. We wanna look after you, uh, show genuine concern for one another. And once again, I know we've talked about this uh, many times throughout these devotionals and also in our online services. More now than ever, we need to be very intentional about how we engage with one another. How can we show the generosity of Christ uh, to one another, even while practicing social distancing and, and now with the mandate to, to shelter in place, to be more intentional, to show genuine concern to show genuine concern, to be able to not only send a text and say, hey man, how, how are you doing? You know, do you have enough? You know, but genuine concern goes a little bit of a step further and, so, and maybe to be able to say to your neighbor and let them know, I'm getting ready to head to the grocery store. Can I pick up anything for you? Maybe put together a few items and, and just bless your, your, neighbor, your neighbor with it. If you have any uh, senior adults that are living nearby to check in on them and make sure that they are doing well to show genuine concern uh, for people. And that genuine concern not only looks after the physical need, but obviously we look after the physical need as a demonstration of the gospel, of a demonstration of meeting a spiritual need as well. Uh, it has often been said that before we can preach the gospel, we need to show the gospel. To be able to communicate the gospel, we need to demonstrate the gospel. So I want to encourage us all to be mindful, to show con genuine concern, to demonstrate the gospel for others, but not stop there. But look for the opportunities to engage people uh, with the hope of the love of the grace of God that is, that's at work in your life and that's at work in my life. Uh, don't be shy to ask someone if you can pray for them. People's hearts are opening opening up more and more uh, to wanting to talk about deep and personal and spiritual things. That would have been true if uh, we were just going about our normal routines because people's hearts tend to open up more naturally as we get closer to, e uh, to Easter. But even more so now with the present need and the present concerns that we all face, people are looking for security. They're looking for who they can trust in and we know that we have the answer through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, look, I hope that these devotionals are encouraging you. I hope that this particular uh, uh, devotional has strengthened you today. Look, we miss you. Um, uh, we look forward to the time that we can all gather together again, uh, physically here at the church. But I, uh, I wanna remind you that on 945, we'll be having our online service. Let's participate together at 945. I know we live the video ups and you can look at those uh, conveniently at any time during the day, but I want to encourage you to join in at 945. It's pretty cool to see people jumping in on the live feed of the uh, online service, saying hello with one, uh, to one another. We're able to interact in the live chat. And, uh, and there's just something about knowing that all across the city, that your brother and sister in Christ, your fellow Redemption Hill church family bro or sister is also worshiping at the same time you're worshiping, praying when you're praying and engaging God's word at the exact same time that you are praying. The Bible says that when we join together in unity and in agreement, God stretches out his hand and he blesses us. So let's join together at 945 on Sunday and uh, let's make sure to encourage one another and to show gen uh, genuine uh, encouragement and concern for one another. Look, God bless you. We're praying for you. We love you. And we look forward to talking to you again really soon. God bless you.